Como from Exni and uh, Slime, featuring Slime Fox from OCD Productions. 27 minutes past 12 o'clock and we have George in the building. George, welcome. What's good, Becky K? I'm excited every time when I see you because I know I'm about to learn. That's right. Capital Talk FM. Thank you so much. Harari's Heartbeat, mm-hmm. 100.4 FM. And hustle hard on that Monday yeah. to get you provoked, inspired, and equipped That's so true. that you know you can be the best version that Elohim, the Most High God, created you ooh, to be. Ooh, okay, are we there already? That's right. That's are right. we there already? Are we there already? All right, George, so just quick in and out before we get into today's topic. How compassionate are you? Very compassionate. Like, Very. would you stop if you see if you saw a fight? Try to break it? No, 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 no. I, d- no, I, did, I did. Not that I did, I did that some time with a good friend of mine, uh-huh. and I ended up getting a blow. <laughs> so can I any my fight? Trust you me. Fight, uh, yeah, unless moon we zero like that. Uh-huh. Otherwise, you know, you don't get yourself involved with fights. Yeah. Because you know you can end up, you know, getting Part provoked, and then you know, you know, a lot happens. So fights, no, I don't. But you know, if I see somebody mm. with a flat tire. Know, oh, somebody okay. who needs help. Someone in trouble. You know, it's, an, it's important to help. Okay. Of course, at good times, that is not at night. At night yeah. is no, not the I best was, time. No, I, I do was that. not going to sleep well on Saturday if we did not pass by and try and figure out if this guy was okay. Because we didn't know what happened. Mm. It could have been in Bava. You know what I mean? All right. And Munangachi, but Munangachi Roa, yeah. Angachi Roa. And then it's the scream for me that got me like, no. No, we need something's to, wrong. Something there. is wrong. We mm. need to go. And the man went And from a man screaming out loud yeah, like that, 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 that somebody's seeking, sure. yeah, seeking help. So we just quickly passed by with my husband to make sure that this guy was okay. But when we got there, ah, mm. you know, everything was fine. But I went home and I slept very well because I was like, hmm, I felt like I did my duty. That's a good thing. Yes. That's now thing. getting into duty, your duty is to assist us right here on Hustle Hard on how to stay in business and doing before business. we go there becky k you know i want to give a big shout out so oh, yeah? this weekend was amazing yeah um there was a lot of sports going on and you know yes. i'm part of, i'm part of the red army you oh, know okay. so big shout out to you know st george's college rugby team they did good that, that did justice you know they were down 12 3 at halftime you mm-hmm. know they were the underdogs yeah so much was being spoken about them so mm-hmm. big shout out to the red army you know, they showed a lion-hearted performance. Right. You know, if you're somebody um, who's in business, mm-hmm. trust you me, that, that that performance that they gave over the weekend you. would have inspired you. Because, you know, at halftime, you know, their mm-hmm. first half was bad. You know, the ball was literally in their half most of the time. But mm-hmm. second half, that determination, that drive, mm-hmm. you know, made them at the end of it, you know, win 22 17 you know what? so it's a, it's amazing that you know st george's did us proud this oh, weekend nice, you know, so so big shout nice, out to you know nice, st george's nice. red dragons and you know i'm a, I'm, I'm a you know i'm st george's boy and a prince edward boy as well Saka. so prince edward you gotta have to church you you know so you know it was a very Stand good up. weekend you know it was it uh, was it's, it's amazing the level of sporting um excellence that we're seeing in high school sports Awesome you know, so it, it's, it's it's amazing. So congratulations to Saints and PA. Yeah, last week we were actually talking about it in in terms of winter sports and how we as parents can um, take part in our children's lives, knowing what it is that they're doing. Because not all the children are academic. Mm. I'm going to be a businessman, but we don't know what road. They are going to take to become a businessman. So support them in whatever it is that they're doing. Because maybe in whatever that that you're supporting, panombuda something. So kudos to you for supporting that one. True that. Awesome stuff. So in celebration of uh, Africa Day, which is on Thursday, 25 May, uh, we want to look at how to do business in Africa. Mm. In doing business in Africa, I remember when I did a program for the BBC, it was called Business in Africa, and we were showcasing businesses that thrived during COVID because some businesses just shut down, eh? That's right. Yes, businesses that had been there like 10 years, 12 years, and you're like, how does a business... Yeah, 10, 12 years shut down and then come business, get two, three years and look at who's driver. Mm. You know, it's thriving during COVID and doing really well. So we want to talk about five reasons why businesses fail. Because mm. I know you are doing business in Zimbabwe, yes, but I also know you're doing business 
across the borders. If you didn't want that information, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to talk to you. So I know you are doing businesses across the borders and how to establish yourself in those businesses. So as much as we can cover, let's get into it. Mm. So um, five reasons why businesses fail. Now, you'll find that um, especially African business, um, there's so many people where they get an idea of a business and they get into it. But the number one thing, as we start our five is understanding what business you're getting into so understanding business knowledge okay what is it actually that you're getting into have you done you know proper research on the trade that you're in you find in zimbabwe because they're going to jump into it because they saw becky k selling it and succeeding in it but do you have the proper business knowledge in that trade you are specifically getting into? Mm. Because you trust to me, the guys who are selling cars, during COVID there were people doing pharmaceuticals. You know, there's always something that's at heat at the moment and people want to jump into that. So the number one reason why people fail in business is because they don't have proper business knowledge <laughs> on the thing that they want to actually do. And because of that, they'll get into it, and sooner than later, they'll run out of steam because they didn't see the returns. They don't have the passion. They don't understand what to write. So, how am I going to get that product in? Mm. Is there continuity? Are there good margins in that business? So people, you know, jump into things with lack of business knowledge. And yeah, it can stay afloat for six months, a year. Yeah. But guess what? This is what happens soon after. You don't have the longevity business plan. You're going to die short. And I think we've seen it many years back in 2007 with guys who were, you know, doing these money deals and whatever. Lack of foresight. There are a couple of guys who opened bureau to changes because they were doing certain things. My uncle was one of them. That's right. So <laughs> kun, kun, it's not there now. Yeah, you see. So, so there are certain things that happen in the heat of the moment. Yeah. And then once it finishes... Trust you me, yeah, you're going to be in a far worse off place. So the number one thing, understand what product, business you want to be in. And, you know, really understand it. Where do you get your product? What are the returns? You know, is, is it something that you personally love doing? So number one, you have to have the business knowledge in what you're doing. Right. Without that, you're going to be in some serious disaster. Number two, our favorite saying here at Capitalk 100.4 FM, failing to plan is planning to fail. So Wakatanga business, get this correctly, so many of us cannot construct a house without a plan. Therefore, if you have a business that is running today and you're listening to me and you don't have a vision or a mission statement about your organization, trust you me, your business that you so call a business is going to be short-lived. You have to be able to say five years down the line, this is what we want to be, this is where we want to be at. But majority of people are living at hand to mouth mm. and chamuka uh, inyama and that's it. But you have to plan that, listen, by 2024, I want to have two branches and you're consistently growing. But if you remain at the same place and you don't plan where you're going to go, trust you me, there are so many people who are doing the exact same business like you, but they have More what's focused. called a plan yeah. and they're yeah. going to overtake you. You know, we remember the days, Anna Nokia, Nana Motorola, but they failed to plan and foresee. But if you look at it today, they were hot and by pizza at those times. But if you look at them today, nobody's using any of those brand phones today. Unless so, it's, like, it's like in a museum type mm, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk my archive. Yeah, talk about archive. Mm, 51, 10, 11, 10, 4, Yeah. But that's that. Other than that, and that's what's going to happen to people who fail to plan in right. their businesses. We're no pizza right now. Things will go well. But you have to have a forecast vision yeah. of exactly where it is you are going <coughs> so that you can actually, you know, become a better person. Right. Number three, and this is what I emphasize to everybody, and this is why, Becky K, you see me branded all the time, every single day, wherever I am at. The third reason why businesses fail is because of poor marketing. Poor marketing. Companies are failing to market their products and services. And you'll find that, um, you know, you watch a movie, you watch a soccer game, you watch anything, you know, there are billboards all over you. Some of you are driving, some of you are at home. There's a product being marketed to you 
every single time you're on TV, you're on your phone, wherever you're at. So you're seeing a product for the very first time every single day, some way, somehow, with your interactions. Question to you, who's running a business right now? Are people seeing you, your product, and your service? So I've been um, going around town doing what we do best. We make the weather behave. You know, we're putting air conditioning units in people's shops all over. Mm -hmm. But I see there's a lot of competition in the clothing industry. Lots. There are malls everywhere. Everywhere. So wow. ask yourself this question, you who's listening. What is going to make me come to your shop if you yourself are not marketing your shop where you're at with all the competition that's in your mall where you are right now, with all the garages that are there, with all the electronic shops, with all the radio channels, with all the... There are certain things that make you specifically go and watch a particular product movie and that's marketing everybody is influenced by something remember that mm -hmm. so what's influencing people to come and buy at your shop so here at capital 100.4 fm we advertised hustle hard this is why majority of people are on here today yeah. because they saw it somewhere mm -hmm. so how do people know where your shop is how do people know where your products and services are but you're not marketing so yeah you've opened great congratulations you've registered a company You've got stock from wherever you've got, and mm -hmm. your shop is full of stock, but you're not selling. And the greatest way to sell is to market. Now, there's a specific person which I always love to give reference to, who I deem is the best marketer of all time. Right. The best marketer of all time. Now, this particular individual, story time again. Yes, this story particular, time. This particular individual existed on this planet many years ago, mm. to be specific, 2,000 plus years ago. Right. And this particular person, Kusina Social Media, Kusina Kanachi, managed to have his name uh -huh. spread across, across not only Africa, the world, the whole wide world. Over. And this person did it without internet, Imagine without that. a phone. But get this correctly, this person did it so well up until today. We mm -hmm. know about his particular product and service. Yes. And this person's name goes by the name Jesus Christ. That's it. And what Jesus did with his product and service. You know, I, I love how Jesus marketed his product. Mm -hmm. So Jesus would heal a blind man and say, don't go and tell anybody what I have done. And he know the blind man is going to go and say something. He was clever. Yeah, that's marketing. Don't tell nobody. And you know, when you don't go tell, and there's no way you can contain a good thing. Mm -hmm. So imagine at your business where you are, when you market your product so well, right? People will go and sneeze on your behalf because of the great service or mm, product that you yeah, offered them. Yeah, yeah. But how will they get to know about that product and service? Because other people went and sneezed the goodness that they received at your product and service. You see, that's how Jesus had so many people come to, you know, to his services. Because do you know? Pane shop yagadai, pane product yagadai, pane radio station yagadai, pane motor yagadai. You know, so everybody is influenced. So it's important that you learn to market your business, your product, your service every single day. This is why I say every day you will see me wearing red, blue, white. You'll see me wearing pro air. I'm either driving a car. I'm either posting about it. I'm either just posting within the shika up a bus. Because some way, somehow, somebody is going to be like, ah, oh, what is this? And guess what? They're going to get interested in your product or service. And if they're not interested, somebody may speak about it during lunch. What ones? Oh, you need aircon. Go to Ningi Ningi. I saw this. And they're the best at what they do. Is there anything like too much marketing? There's nothing like that. Because if you look at, you know, Anna Coca-Cola, Anna Nike, all these big brands, every single time you will see they are in your face. And it depends how hungry you are as an individual. Mm -hmm. If you say there's too much, I remember earlier on when I started business, they ban one my WhatsApp group. Could you please, Chimbotau Rojimwe, all you are talking about is make the weather behave every single time. Yeah. But yeah, trust you me, yeah. it subconsciously went into people's minds. Oh, yeah. And a year two down the line, when they then needed our product and service, when it was winter or summer when it's hot, mm -hmm. they were like, Ndaka Mbutumiru wa poster. Let me check in my gallery. Now oh, they na. want you. Now they're looking and for you. And then they call you. Yeah. But then Waganyara. 
you know, a lot of people, Wanonyara, they hustle. If you're doing it and you're proud of it, remember, that's what puts money on the table. So you have to be very aggressive. This is one of the major reasons why businesses close. Because I partner that aggressiveness, and this is why people will constantly fail. <sighs> be unapologetically proud about your hustle. So with the aggressiveness, um, is there a point where you say, let me stop here with the aggressiveness, your marketing, because you can do all social media, and then you can also get people who sneeze on mm. your behalf, like True. the word of mouth. And then what are you doing personally because you've got the billboards and the posters doing the work for you? True. And then you've got people speaking on your behalf and, you know, w word of mouth. Yeah. Inini as the founder of the business, or maybe I am the business, mm. What am I doing? What part am I playing? Okay, so it's so important, and we've spoken about this so many times. What's the first thing that comes to people's minds when they mention your name? And it's so important. We, we've spoken okay. about okay. this, yeah. and it's important you are identified by a product or a service that you specifically do. Mm -hmm. Remember, we spoke about uh, my Rebecca Chisamba. Automatically, you know, you know, you know, you know, yes. you, you yeah. know the, the, you the know phrase, exactly. right? If you think of, you know, um, I could mention many names. If I say Bob Marley, if I say Alec Macheso, Oliver Mtukudzi, right. you know, automatically, oh, yeah. that's the, you know. So well, what is it that people think about when they hear your name? And that's what we need to work on, the first thing, as an individual. Mm -hmm. So there are people who say, ah, George, in interest, social media, she wrong. Okay. Number two, you can use influencers. So what we've done at Pro Air, we've engaged so many influencers to make funny commercials, mm -hmm. marketing our product. You know, getting the knowledge out there. So if you keep putting poster, 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 it gets irritating. People are like, ah, no, we know what you do. But a little creativity makes yeah. people inquisitive. That's why you see these comedians, but you know, the so Petra at the end. Because it's it's nice, it's They're funny. Driving the message They're driving at the end engaging. of it. Oh, this is what they were selling, you know. So there's so many different ways to market. And they, I've, I've I've got you know a group of young mentees of mine who, mm -hmm. who are saying no, it's still my introvert. But there are many ways to engage people to like your product. But the the key basic thing is you need to market your product. You know, I'm so proud of you know we've got people here locally in the country. Yeah. Um, you know, Philip Mataranyika. A legend in his field, right? Yeah. But you see him as big as he is, still up until today. So who are you, Wakatanga Nezuro, thinking that you know, you know? And, and it's a little knowledge mm -hmm. there. It's a little about your business there. Mm -hmm. little, you know, there's a reason why people follow certain people. True. So be followed and be identified for being the solution in your specific field by being unapologetically proud about what it is exactly you do. So right. lack of marketing. I can guarantee you, your business will shut down in less than five years. Waka zara ne stock. it a sale and you don't get the value of the products that you got them initially for because of lack of marketing. So it's important. If you can't do it, engage somebody who mm. can assist you. True. And, and, you know, that will um, uplift your business. And, and like we spoke, number four, first-time entrepreneurs. The reason why businesses fail, you're the first-time entrepreneur. I remember I spoke about this on our very first interview. What made me become George Billionaire, multi-award winning entrepreneur? I purposely surrounded myself with people who knew what I didn't know. So I did not have financial intelligence and that hour last week. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it. I it didn't know. On you. you learned. I, I went and asked, what should I do with this money? Because instinctively, I don't know, Tenga, Mercedes, yeah, GLE 63, AMG, and you know, but then lack of financial intelligence will cause you to fail because you're going to immediately focus on self-gratification and would acquire what you have arrived. And guess what? That's what's going to cause you downfall because that car is not an asset. It's actually a liability, you know, and you're using that money instead of growing your business. So first-time entrepreneurs don't have the knowledge that they need for them to grow. So it's so important to surround yourself with people, mentors, I cannot emphasize this. I, I, know, I, 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 could, yeah. I could never, ever be who I am today. Without those men. Without the anyway. many people that I surrounded myself with. I saved them for a long time. I understood them. And I've always said this. It's not what they said to me, but it's how they treated themselves around their workers, mm -hmm. how, how they focus on the most important things. You know, they don't go for the latest this, that, and the other. 
they make sure that they're growing, they're opening another branch, they're focused, you know. And, and, and that's the most important thing. Wow. But first-time entrepreneurs, which are like a majority <coughs> of the people in Zimbabwe, <laughs> this first-line generation entrepreneurs. Before us, mm-hmm. before that, you are the first-line generation entrepreneur. I know everything, I can do it. It's a lie. Go and ask somebody. And, you know, we've spoken about this, asking intelligent questions. Mm-hmm. You know, what is it that you think I should do with the $1,000? What are your greatest challenges that you faced in your business in your first year? Yeah. Success leaves clues. We've said it. So, Usabe, I know it all type of person. You know, be somebody who is focused on learning. We spoke about the, 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 the sponge effect. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and that's one of the things that a lot of people don't do here in Africa. We think to their race, but then some of the basic things we'll learn in business is from other people who've gone and done business practically, not the book smart people, because you'll find majority of successful business owners are not necessarily book smart, but they have a good team that surrounds them, and this is why they are successful in business. And number five. Number five, you know, and, and this is one of the greatest challenges with a lot of businesses in this day and age. You know, I love the word of God. It says that a good name is better than riches. You know, you find that in Africa, um, <laughs> especially in Africa. Yeah. And I found this with, you know, which is probably why we do business with quite a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And, and they, they support us immensely because we say what we do and we do what we say. Majority of people that you find doing business today mm-hmm. are not honest. You ah, know, honesty, honesty is the greatest <laughs> challenge with our generation. <laughs> you know, you say you'll be there at 10, you don't arrive on time. You know, you say you deliver this, you, you deliver something else. You know, if so you deliver at all. See, so uh, our generation is going to fail. And, and it just takes, you might be, have been good in so many years in your business, but the one time, that you mess up. Uh, and it will tarnish your image, your brand, your product. You know, so it's so important that um, deliver, over deliver when it comes to your product and service. Let's, you know, it, let's sit there for a little bit on being honest and over delivering in your product and service. Mm. What's our problem in Africa as service providers? Yes, you, you mentioned the whole being honest thing, mm. and uh, or dishonest rather, and it then leads us not to, to be rebooked for certain things, mm. or I'm not ordering from you again. Mm. What's our problem? Our problem is we want to get rich quick, and we want to overcharge, we want to, to do shortcut in business. Mm-hmm. And this is what then leads for somebody saying, I won't buy from this person, because you know what? I thought this product was X amount and then, you know, or we don't actually deliver when we're supposed to deliver. And and this is what then tarnishes. People want, you know, quick returns. Right. But business is about relationships. It's about relationships. You find there's some people who've supported us in our business because we've been consistent in our delivery, in our product, in right. our pricing. Yeah. You don't get something that was a hundred dollars today, tomorrow it's two hundred and fifty. And then it's unjustifiable. Mm. But that consistency is key. A little on a little, and soon God will entrust you with much. But you'll find somebody charging overly absorbent. And you know, there's no way I'll come back to your shop to buy a product. Because I'll go somewhere else and then I'll say, "Ah, I could have bought two of these. And it's the exact same product. So it's important we are honest. We give people value for their money. Because remember, people worked hard for their money. So mm-hmm. also provide a good service or a product to the people that, yeah. that, that, is, that goes with their value. But people, um, especially Africans, we, we like to overcharge. And, but there's no relationship there. It's transactional. But business is about relationship. But most of the people are transactional. Once they get what they want, that's Out. that. Even if you say, why is it times three the price? The justification doesn't make sense. And trust you me, you're not going to recommend anybody to 
that shop or product or service. But once you get good value for whatever it is that you're doing, mm-hmm. you know, their fast food outlets, wherever they are in the world, due to, you know, the same thing you're getting here is the same thing you're getting there. The quality is the same. And that's giving people good value for their money. Yeah. You know, whether you buy electronics, a car, it is, it's good value. And that's what makes people then excel in their businesses. But let me make the most that I can. Trust you me, your business will not last and it's going to shut down soon. Sure. But it's too late. But it's too late Because now. you've already messed up your name and your reputation. So, you know, a fair value, a fair markup. But in, 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 in the country and the economy that we're in, people, but as a last because it's hmm. not sustainable. You've given me a lot to think about. Zero seven one nine one hundred four zero four. We have George Billionaire in studio. Seven one seven. Atumira message akat. Ah, the guy are good or you company again on the chin. Dama econ. What is a business now? <laughs> yes, hala hala. Send us through your messages if you have any questions for Mr. George in terms of doing business in Africa. We just covered why businesses fail. Just a quick rundown. He says uh, businesses in Africa are failing because we don't understand or have business knowledge and we lack focus. You just want to do it and just do it fast. Understand the line of business that you're in. Understand the market. And then number two, he says failing to plan is planning to fail. And we are not planning. This is why businesses end up just lasting my six months, my two months. Business Rakutofara because you did not plan ahead. And then poor marketing. And there's nothing like too much marketing. However, within your marketing, you need to be creative. Be creative with the marketing and have solutions. You are paid for the solutions that you solve, which I will leave you with the question, like how much (laughs) are you making from the problems that you're solving? (laughs) Maria Wakabata is also no problem you are solving. That's that's man. If you think about it, okay. Let's let's move on. Let's move yeah. on. Number four, he says, um, it's because we are first time entrepreneurs, so it is bound to happen. Don't beat yourself about the bush. Like like don't don't beat yourself too much mm. into the bush about it. Oh my gosh, my business has failed. depression. No, come back, restructure, restrategize, learn, ask questions. And then number five, he says, we fail in business as Africans because we are not honest. We are not honest. We just want to make a quick back microwave. Ding. Waitamari. You did not build any relationship. You don't know if the customer is going to come back. All you are focused on is, I want to make money. I just mm. want money. We'll be right back. This is Capital Talk 100.4 FM, Harare's Heartbeat. It's The Pulse on Hustle Hard with George Billionaire. The Pulse with Becky K on Capital 100.4 FM. We have a message here from 2664, and they are saying, Mr. Hilton, that is. He says, hey, team. All right, team, team. Go be sick. You know, that song just came into my head. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I am one of the people who follow George Billionaire, GB. Okay, I like that. I was hoping that he could mentor me, but I sent him a message. Mr. Busy. Mr. Busy G. Yeah, Hilton, Billion. how are you? Um, mm-hmm. Do inbox me again, and uh, I'm sure we'll take it from there. I mm-hmm. get so many of these people, you know, asking. But you'll see if you follow me on all social media handles every mm-hmm. single day, we are downloading some nuggets, school run diaries. I do post. There's so many videos there on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Okay. On With George Billionaire, which people can actually get mentored to besi- be f- besides actually seeing me in person. All right. So, so let's let, let's do that recap again because I was about to answer him and then you said it. Mm. We've got four minutes left. Let's talk about <laughs> long distance mentoring mm. and success leaving clues. Yeah. Because they can still learn by watching. True. Yes. So let's talk about that. Tr- so people need to understand that in the environment that we are in now you know technology is just a click away and so many people like hilton come to me and ask how can i be mentored by you and you find the questions they ask are things that are up there uploaded on videos on many you know streams that are there so it's important to actually do a little bit research of somebody who you want to call a mentor find out read their products read their books you know go through whatever they've been through you'll find I remember one of my mentors um, who became a mentor of mine. 
I, I was just like you, Hilton. Um, I went up to him and I asked, say, can you mentor me? And he said, are you serious? And he told me to go and reach, uh, read a book called Think and Grow Rich. And I was like, okay. And it was a 200-page book. So imagine meeting a mentor mm -hmm. and immediately he tells you to go and read a book. And I read that book within a week. I went back to him and he says, okay, now what do you want to ask me? Then I said, sir, tell me, what are the greatest challenges you faced in your business career? And he said, go to chapter five. What did you understand in chapter five? Yo. So basically everything I was asking him was in that book. Was in that book. But little did I know, I wouldn't have read that book had I not asked him. So it was Rupindur and Degama question. So sometimes people just want mentorship just for just. But trust you me, you know, there's a lot you can learn by, you know, um, things that are out there already. Mm -hmm. There are so many mentors who can mentor you without actually them knowing you. Because there's so much content information out there, you know, why certain people did what they did, their failures, their successes, the top 10 success principles, ETC. So there's so much. And it's not every mentor you're going to get access to. You know, I'm just fortunate and persistent enough that, you know, I will constantly keep knocking on doors of mentors. And the whole the time. Hilton, if I were you. I'm <laughs> for Yeah, you know, ultimately, you know, all the people who mentor me now, trust to me, one thing that I did to get favor from them, to, to them mentoring me, is that I served them before I actually asked for anything. So, you know, if you find something that possibly I don't have or you see something, mm -hmm. say, hey, George. I can do your, you know, your, your flyers for you, you know, first seed, first serve. Mm -hmm. Then ultimately, guess what? In return, I will give you my time and attention. But think of it, Hilton, how many people are asking me, hi, can you be my mentor? And can, do I have the time in my 24-hour slot that I have for my so personal life? So I can life? offer a service to you. Mm. I can be your personal assistant. I can do the <laughs> social media stuff for you and get through all those messages coming through. I will respond to Anna Hilton and all. True that. See, there we go. So I'll, I'll send in through my... <laughs> <laughs> guys. George, how did we get a hold of you, your social media and Right, so my name is George Billionaire Munengwa, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I encourage everybody, if you're not on LinkedIn and you're in business, get on LinkedIn and uh, on YouTube, same name. So if you follow me, I can guarantee you that if you follow me, your mind will not be okay. I will constantly provoke, inspire and equip you so that you ultimately can be the best version that God created you to be. Awesome stuff. Capital 100.4 FM. Becky K is the name. It's one o'clock and it's time for the news. It's The Pulse with Becky K on Capital 100.4 FM. And now for the news in detail. Good afternoon. I'm Toby Gillespanda. Vice President and Health and Child 